Friday, September 23rd, 2022, Albert Pujols became the fourth player in MLB history to hit 700 home runs, joining an elite group with the likes of Babe Ruth, Hank Aaron, and Barry Bonds. His ability to put up power numbers year after year earned him the nickname, The Machine. This is the story of Albert Pujols, his journey to the 700 home run club, and why he is a leader young players should strive to be. Jose Alberto Pujols Alcantara was born January 16, 1980 in Santo Domingo, the baseball capital of the Dominican Republic. He came from very humble beginnings, but he and his family always made the most of it. At 16 years old, Albert and his family moved to New York and shortly after to Independence, Missouri in search for a better life for their family in the pursuit of the big league dream. While there, Pujols attended Fort Osage High School and while he struggled to adapt to the language and the culture at first, he always felt at home on the baseball diamond. We're talking video game numbers from day one. Some of his high school stats have some discrepancies online, but let me hit you with a couple highlights. 1997 Legion Ball Summer Stats. 29 homers, 119 RBIs. His second year, 1998, nobody wanted to pitch to him. In 88 plate appearances, he was walked 55 times. You combine that with a 660 average and eight home runs in the remaining 33 at bats, the guy only got out 11 times the entire season. That summer, Legion Ball again, he went on to hit 593 with 34 more home runs and 124 RBIs. He went on to play shortstop at Maple Woods Community College, where he hit a grand slam in his first at bat off future big leaguer Mark Burley. He finished that season hitting 466 with 22 bombs. Shockingly, the Rays were the only team to grant him a draft workout. Fernando Arango, the Rays Midwest scout at the time, watched Pujols in a few games and said that he was the best hitter he'd ever seen. Unfortunately, the Rays did not hear Arango's shouting and they went in another direction. When the 1999 draft arrived, Arango and others thought the Rays would surely take Pujols in the top 10 rounds. The first overall pick by the Rays, might I add, went to Athens Drive High School graduate Josh Hamilton. Other notables taken in the first round that year were Josh Beckett, Barry Zito, Ben Sheets, and about 47 other guys you probably don't know who are. The first pick in the second round, also by the Rays, happened to be future all-star outfielder Carl Crawford. The first 10 rounds came and went, no pool holes. It's said that Fernando Arango became so upset by this and the fact that they did not grab Pujols by this time, he eventually quit his job over it. Finally, the Cardinals, with pick number 402 in the 13th round, drafted him for $30,000 signing bonus and an additional $30,000 for college if it didn't work out. Pujols started out his career in high A and dominated pitchers so much, the Cardinals brought him up to triple A for the postseason push. That offseason, Pujols would receive an invite to big league spring training camp, but the Cardinals wanted to give him a little more time to develop in AAA before bringing him up to the show. It's around this time that it's rumored Mark McGuire told Tony La Russa, the Cardinals manager at the time, that if he didn't promote Albert to the opening day roster, it would be one of the worst moves of his career. Around that time, Bobby Bonilla, yes, that Bobby Bonilla, who would have started in left field for the opening day roster, made La Russa's decision that much easier when Bonilla got a hamstring strain. La Russa maintained that Pujols was already getting the call up before the injury, but who knows. The opening day spot was eventually handed to 21-year-old Pujols in what would kick off one of the most dominant careers of all time. It didn't take long before Pujols would notch his first MLB hit in the Cardinals' opening day loss. That hit came on April 2nd, 2001, and let me put into perspective for you just how long ago that was. Dansby Swanson was just wrapping up the second grade. The Montreal Expos would still be a team for another three seasons. Tom Brady had only six career passing yards, and the young Royals phenom Bobby Witt Jr. was still two months away from his first birthday. That hit was the only hit that Pulis would have that first series, but the next series in Arizona, he broke out. He had his first major league home run, and went a combined seven for 14. By the time the Bonilla was ready to come back from the injury, Pujols had already cemented himself into the Cardinals' starting lineup. In the Cardinals' first home series, in his first at bat at Bush Stadium, Pujols showed the Cardinals fans exactly why he was meant to be there. 
belting his first of many home runs in St. Louis. That first season, he would hit 329 with 37 homers, unanimously win the NL Rookie of the Year, a Silver Slugger, and be selected to the All-Star Game. This would be the first of 10 consecutive seasons with 30 homers, 100 RBIs, and 300 plus batting average. Absolutely mind-boggling. 2011 came and it would be the last year on his contract in St. Louis when he finally hit under 300 for the first time in his career, 299. But he would wrap up his time in St. Louis with 455 career homers. The bidding war that offseason led to the Angels eventually winning out over the Cardinals, signing Pools to a 10-year, $240 million deal. However, not everything would be rainbows and butterflies for Pools in L.A. We started to see a slow decline in Pujols' game over his time with the Angels. 2013, he played just 99 games. This is the first time he'd ever played under 100 games in his career. While the home runs were still consistently 20 plus with 40 homers in 2015, his average dipped to 224 in the shortened 2020 season. Which begs me to think, I, where would he be if we actually played out a full 2020 season? Halfway through the 2021 campaign, the Angels released Pujols from his contract, but when one door closes, another opens. Enter the 2021 Dodgers. The Angels still had to pay out the rest of Albert's contract, but the Dodgers picked up Pujols on a $420,000 contract to finish out the rest of the season. Pujols was slotted into more of a reserve role on a postseason bound team where he felt respected and comfortable. A slow start eventually led to some breakout games in a season total of 254 with 12 homers and a loss in the NLCS to eventual World Series champions Atlanta Braves. Rumors were floating around offseason about where Pujols would end up or if people thought that he was just done. That is till his rightful home, St. Louis, gave him a call. And the Cardinals would pick up Pujols on a one-year $2.5 million deal. With Pujols sitting at 679 homers, there was still a chance but he'd have to hit the most home runs he's hit in a season in three years to reach 700. I remember watching betting lines at plus 450 on Albert to reach 700 back in July, but the machine just kept swinging. One beautiful night, just last week, back in Dodger Town, Pujols was sitting at 698. His first at bat against Andrew Heaney, Pujols took a 1-2 fastball deep into the night for a home run number 699. Just one inning later, right-handed pitcher Phil Bickford hangs a 1-1 slider that Pujols absolutely destroys, and I have never heard Dodger Stadium react so positively to an opposing team's home run. He rounds the bases, immediately high-fives Dominican native Adrian Beltre. It's three minutes ingrained in the history of baseball. Not only has Pujols put together one of the most decorated MLB careers of all time, the impact he's made off the field has been at least as big, if not bigger. Albert and his wife Deidre launched the Pools Family Foundation in 2005. The foundation promotes awareness of Down syndrome, aids those in poverty in the Dominican Republic, and supports people with disabilities. In 2009, the Albert Pools Wellness Center for Adults with Down Syndrome opened in Chesterfield, Missouri. On top of that, he and his foundation have made several trips to the DR with doctors, dentists, and medical supplies to help those who cannot afford medical care. It seems like any chance he's had to give back to people, he's done it. There are so many videos that have popped up over the years on social media of Pujols taking off his jerseys, his cleats, signing them, and giving them to young fans or fans with disabilities. Everything he's done over his career as a player has been admirable. He's really exemplified what a leader is all about, and he's had a lot of fun doing it. By the time this releases, the Cardinals will have six more regular season games against the Pirates, a team that will likely lose 100 games by the end of the year, if they haven't already. They will have a chance to make a trip through playoffs and potentially find themselves playing for one last World Series, which is exactly what Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright, and the machine, Albert Pujols, would love to see happen. That's going to do it for us today in our deep dive on Albert Pujols and his journey to 700 and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments which leader you would like to see and learn about next time. If you feel like you got some value, drop a like and subscribe as it helps us out a lot. Have a great day and we'll see you Friday.